Way down at the bottom of the world is so icy and remote that even asking, are there roads in Antarctica, sounds silly. But the answer is not as simple as you'd think. It's not like no one gave it a shot. Back in the early 2000s, the United States gambled with Antarctica road construction on a massive scale. They tried creating a thousand-mile ice highway meant to connect the coast to the middle of the continent. McMurdo, located on Ross Island, is the largest settlement in Antarctica. It works as a temporary home for up to a thousand people during peak season. The South Pole Station is at the other end, and it's the southernmost spot where anyone lives. Basically, these two stations are the backbone of Antarctic logistics and supply routes. Usually, everything scientists needed at the pole had to be flown in, which is expensive and risky. One bad storm and the whole operation can be grounded for weeks. The ice highway was supposed to be a dependable overland route for transporting tons of supplies safely across the continent, even when planes were stuck on the ground. On the Antarctica map, it looks simple enough. Draw a straight line, smooth out some snow, and haul fuel and supplies instead of flying them in. It sounded ambitious, but well worth the effort. It could save millions in fuel alone. All they needed to do was keep the surface level. But beneath the snow was layers of soft powder and hidden crevasses, not to mention the constantly shifting ice that moved like a slow, frozen river. Bulldozers struggled, and tractors moved slowly like slugs. Whenever the wind blew, the path they made was soon covered by fresh snow. It seemed to them like the continent was doing it on purpose. The crews working there lived in sled-mounted insulated modules and mobile shops. Their days started with engines chilled or stiff, requiring preheating before work. Doing laundry was one of the greatest challenges of the entire adventure. By the end of 2005, the route had its first full traverse. But the real challenge became maintaining it. The path runs through sheer zones, and new cracks open every season, forcing crews to rebuild and repair repeatedly. Eventually, it felt less like they were creating a road and more like they were just trying to keep up with the Antarctic weather and temperature. In the end, the highway wasn't exactly what it was supposed to be. But that doesn't mean it was a failure or a waste of time. Quite the contrary. What came out of the mission is what's now known as the South Pole Traverse. It's a seasonal land route that still supplies the pole today. It's not a road with asphalt or traffic signs, but it has become the most important route. Every southern summer, a small convoy of tracked tractors sets off from McMurdo Station, towing long trains of sleds toward the South Pole. They follow the same trail that the first crews carved out about 20 years ago. The route changes length every year and has grown from 1,028 miles to 1,030 miles. The journey takes from 25 to 40 days of steady crawling, hauling fuel and supplies that would otherwise require dozens of flights. This slow caravan saves millions and avoids weather risks. In the end, the Traverse turned out to be more than just a supply route. It was a testing ground for Antarctica infrastructure engineering. It became a proving ground for how to survey, groom, and maintain over-ice routes. But for now, the route survives only because people keep fighting to hold it together. Leave it alone for a season or two, and the ice will simply take it back. In Antarctica, abandoned equipment and structures can slowly vanish under accumulating ice and snow. Entire stations have become buried over decades, and some vehicles were rediscovered, partially buried and later lost from view again. As time goes on, snow and ice can build up so much that they can completely cover up machinery, making it difficult to find without some serious digging. At minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit, the cold becomes an engineer's nightmare. Jet fuel turns into jelly, batteries die within minutes, and steel becomes brittle enough to snap like a candy bar. In those temperatures, even breathing feels mechanical. Moisture from your breath freezes on your eyelashes, and any exposed skin can end up with frostbite very quickly. The ice is fascinating. It moves like a conveyor belt, carrying everything to the sea. 
Anything trapped in it – crates, vehicles, or even buildings – drifts slowly, sometimes miles away from where it began. And while the ice itself seems alive, there's other interesting geological stuff to discover. Close to some of these supply routes is Blood Falls, a waterfall flowing in a shocking blood-red stream. It's not a scene from a horror movie. The color comes from iron-rich, salty water, trapped under the ice for millions of years, turning red the moment it hits the air. The continent has over 400 subglacial lakes that we know about, tucked away under thick ice. Many of these lakes fill and drain regularly, creating water flows that can make glaciers slide more easily and change how they move. It's also a gold mine for meteorite hunters. Thousands of meteorites are found each year on the ice. Antarctica isn't just a frozen wasteland. It's one gigantic outdoor laboratory. Scientists come here to study everything, from climate change and atmospheric chemistry to cosmic rays and meteorites. Astronomers love it because of the bone-dry and stable air, perfect for telescopes that peer into deep space. Geologists dig through ancient rock formations that reveal how continents once fit together, while glaciologists drill deep into the ice to read Earth's past climates like pages in a frozen diary. Even biologists face the cold to study ancient resilient mm. microbes and penguin colonies, hoping to understand how life survives in the harshest conditions on the planet. The few people who live here, mostly researchers, engineers, and mechanics, move around like cautious astronauts. Every trip is logged and every mile planned. Without regular roads, getting around Antarctica takes a mix of creativity and stubbornness. Most roads are temporary snow paths, flagged to avoid hidden drifts. Around McMurdo, short ice roads appear each season to haul cargo, then vanish as the ice melts. Antarctica's transportation challenges are the most unique on our planet. Regular vehicles just can't handle it out here. That's why most everything runs on tracks, crawling along at a jogger's pace while pulling sleds packed with supplies. Air travel is really what keeps things moving. Big cargo planes touch down on temporary runways made of packed snow or ice. There are also smaller ski-equipped aircraft, which is something you don't see every day. But when winter sets in, seasonal runways shift, crack, or drift and have to be re-established. Even the ships that bring in food and fuel each summer don't hang around. They cut a narrow path through the sea ice, unload, and get out before the ocean freezes up again. When resupply ships arrive, the crews rush to unload everything before the ocean refreezes, working around the clock. Everything gets stacked on the ice like a temporary warehouse that must disappear before the sea locks itself shut for the season. Antarctica is currently protected by the Antarctic Treaty System and the Madrid Protocol which together classify the entire continent as a natural reserve devoted to peace and science. Those agreements ban mining, permanent development, and anything that could harm the environment. Right now, the tough conditions keep most people away, and that's a good thing for the environment. A permanent road could change everything. Bring in more tourists and more activity, and the ice would struggle to wipe away human presence. That's why even a short snow trail needs official approval. Every move is watched, and every footprint has to be justified. In the end, a better question isn't are there roads in Antarctica, but should there be? Every attempt to build one, from the Great Ice Highway to today's seasonal routes, proves expensive and even pointless. That's why Antarctica road construction today isn't about building something permanent. It's about keeping scientists supplied so they can make amazing discoveries, such as drilling ice cores that trap ancient air dating back 800,000 years. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.